Hi there, it's Emily and today I'm going to be doing a reflection with you on the book of Ruth. Now I'm going to start this reflection assuming that you have some kind of knowledge of the book of Ruth, of the storyline, of what happens and who the main characters are. If you don't or it's just not fresh in your mind or you just want to take a recap, pause this video and open up your Bible app on your phone or grab your paper Bible and just give it a quick read. It'll take you about five minutes, if that, maybe a little bit more if you're a more thorough reader. Um, and it's a really good read actually, so go on, just pause it, come back in five minutes when you've read it. Okay, now that you've done that, which hopefully you have, otherwise that was a really, really, really awkward interlude, um, why am I reflecting on Ruth of all the books in the Bible at this time? The first reason is simply that Ruth's actually set around this time of year. It says at the end of chapter one that Naomi and Ruth were arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Now the barley harvest was usually around the time of April and if I'm not mistaken it's currently April. The second thing is that the book of Ruth in Jewish worship would have been read during the Feast of Weeks. It's actually around the time of the Feast of Weeks that the Holy Spirit was poured out at Pentecost. Sometimes the dates are very close together, sometimes they overlap. I haven't actually looked at when the Feast of Weeks was and when the Pentecost was at that particular time, but they were probably close. So the Holy Spirit was poured out to us as God's people as the Jews had been reading the book of Ruth. And I think that's worth reflecting on. And the third thing is that Ruth is a character I think all of us can relate to at this time. She had a husband and her husband's father and family. She knew what her role was in life and she was probably ticking along quite nicely. Until one day her husband's dead, her husband's father and brother are dead and there's no one left to look after her except her mother and sister-in-law and it seems as if all hope might be lost with no income, no home and no right to any land. I probably don't need to explain why that might relate to some of us now. How many of us have seen our lives transformed by coronavirus and this lockdown? And it's going to look different for every single one of us, whether it's pretty much life as normal but working from home and you just don't have your own space in the house and you're being driven slightly mad by your partner or your child or your flatmate leaving everything everywhere. Or it might be that you're actually despairing quite a lot because you don't know if you've got a job to go back to, you don't know where the money's coming from, you don't know how to put food on the table and you're relying on food banks and you feel slightly ashamed and maybe a bit lost. We've all been chucked into chaos of different degrees. And Ruth found herself chucked into chaos through no choice of her own. But what's interesting is the first thing she did was that she embraced this chaos. In verse 8, Naomi said to Ruth, go back, each of you, to your mother's home. She was talking to both Ruth and her other daughter-in-law, Orpah. And she goes on to explain that there's literally no reason to stay with her. There's nothing these girls could get. There's nothing Ruth has to offer them. Sorry, Naomi has to offer them. Going back to their mother's home implies getting remarried, starting again, having a new family. And Ruth's sister-in-law, Orpah, realises this is actually quite a smart thing to do. And she says bye and she goes off back to her mother's home. But Ruth doesn't. She's moved by compassion for Naomi. She goes with Naomi to be a blessing to her mother-in-law. She says in verse 16, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. She must have known of the Lord from Naomi for the 10 or so years that she'd been married. But she'd never chosen to follow him. But as soon as she's faced with seeing Naomi return to Bethlehem alone, Ruth commits her life out of compassion and joins her in her faith, in her people, in her identity, until death parts them, which is a severe and binding covenant that we rarely use outside of marriage these days. She doesn't come with her to Bethlehem, 
as a refugee seeking help because returning to Moab, going to her mother's home, would have been the more certain source of help and the wiser thing to do. She goes with Naomi to be a missionary in the simplest terms, living a gospel life to show compassion and love. Even though your life right now looks different to what you'd want, rather than seeking the option of greater safety, what sacrifices can we make in order to show love, mercy and compassion to those who might be experiencing more chaos than us? What does it look like for us to live a gospel life in this time? And I'm not going to give suggestions because it's going to look different for each of us. But it's worth reflecting on what that actually looks like for you. And the second thing that Ruth did was in chapter 2, verse 3. She went out, entered a field and began to glean behind the harvesters. Gleaning is something that only the poorest of the poor did. It was a kind of welfare system. She basically went behind the men and women who were employed to work in the field and picked up what was dropped or missed in order to feed herself and Naomi and survive. She couldn't be certain that there would be anything there for her because others could also glean in the same field. But she had hope that by going out there in faith, there would be something there for her. And actually, by going out and admitting that she was the poor, she was the orphan, she was a stranger, she caught the attention of the owner of the field, Boaz, and she married him, who happened to be related in some weird way to Naomi. And she was able not just to be pivotal in the line of Jesus, but she restored the tribes of Lot and Abraham. If we look way back in the story, Abraham and Lot, split ways and the tribe of Israel was separated. In Ruth's marriage to Boaz, these two lines of the tribe were restored, the family was healed, and what had been separated for many years came together and became the family that God used to bring the ultimate blessing on the world, which is what we've just been looking at at Easter, is the line of Jesus. Perhaps you have no idea what to expect from the rest of this lockdown. You don't know how you'll survive, you don't know where hope or favour will come from and you don't even know what there is out there for you to do or to have hope in. But don't let that stop you from going out into the proverbial field and living with hope. Don't actually go out into any fields because we're staying at home. That's the point of this. But where can you glean in your life? in order to receive favour and security at this time? Is it using the half an hour that you don't have to commute to sing a worship song and read a chapter of the Bible and say a prayer for the people in your life that you're concerned about? And that may look like just praying for your own household. Or does it look like using that five minutes that you're scrolling through Facebook to actually just post a quick status saying that you're really struggling and you feel really alone and you'd really appreciate it if someone could call you or help you by getting your shopping or, I don't know, just letting someone bless you and in doing so, restoring this community that we're all part of that is threatened to be separated because of this lockdown. And if there's one thing I know, especially from what Laura's told me and what I've seen on Facebook is that St James's isn't a community that's being separated, it's a community that's coming together. So how can we use the things, the time, the energy, the chores that are getting dropped and missed and left to waste for the blessing and the enriching not just of our own souls, but of those around us? I'd encourage you to spend a little bit more time with Ruth, have a read through feel free to send me um, on Facebook or on WhatsApp. I'll somehow post my phone number. Um, Anything that you find interesting, anything that you just, you see God in, that you see Jesus in, anything that brings you encouragement and just reflect on what it means to live like Ruth in this time.